Welcome to our guide on how to set up a Bailey Caravan. Today our Bailey Caravan is a Bailey Ranger 505. It's a 2008. Um, a lot of the Bailey Caravans of this 2008, 2009, 2010 and even from probably about 2005 Bailey Caravans are going to be very similar. So any, any of the Bailey Caravans in that age are going to have very very similar setups as this um, this one has a Truma water heater a Truma S3002 fire that works on gas and electric the fridge I believe is a Thetford but I'll double check that afterwards so if you've got the same equipment all the operation on your Bailey caravan should be the same as this one We've now pulled up on site and we're going to get ready to show you how to work everything, how to operate it and how to set up. The first thing that we need to do is put all the legs down. So we've got corner steadies at the front, both sides and then two at the rear. Um, the leg winding handle with this Bailey Caravan will be in the front locker and we literally just wind the, uh, wind the legs down. We have also got a, a levelling video which if you have a look in the description of this video um, in the description we'll put a tag uh, or a, uh, a, a little link into the caravan tips video and we'll, we'll mark it as how to level your caravan if you have a look at that one and that'll give you a guide just how to get your caravan nice and level uh, and a few little tips in there as well so we've now got our legs down we're now going to go to the, the front and we're, we've already made sure that all of our gas equipment inside is turned off. So we can now turn the gas bottle into the on position. Now this is the, the regulator and this is the pigtail. It's set up for red bottles, the propane gas. Um, and what you have to remember is that this is a reverse thread. You don't need a spanner with this. We've put a quick quick connector on there, which you can just do up hand tight. So no need for a spanner. Leg winder will also, you'll find that in the front locker box here. And you've also got an alloy wheel spare, just in case you ever get into trouble. There is a little yellow shut off valve on the, on the regulator. Now that is really just for servicing and what you should tend to do is leave that valve alone and just turn your gas on and off on your gas bottle itself. If you're not going to use the caravan, uh, so putting it into storage, taking it home etc, before you travel make sure that, that gas bottle's off and we've got the straps here to be able to lock well into position also. While we're at the front of the caravan, um, this is set up for a 13 pin adapter on the car so it used to be and a lot of the other Bailey caravans of this age will be set up with a black 7 pin and a grey 7 pin this one it has had the newer conversion done so it is set up for 13 pin so just make sure that your vehicle that you're going to tow with this for this car so just make sure that your vehicle for this caravan is set up with 13 pin or you can buy a converter that will go 13 to 2 sevens. We're also fitted with the AKS 2004 stabilised hitch head. Um, we will show you how this operates when you, when you come to collect it. We have also got a hitching up guide in the description. We'll put a link to our hitching up guide as well so that will help and just run through the little checks. Uh, with the breakaway cable, the black handle and actually how to hitch up onto the car. So as I say you'll find that in, in the description there'll be a link there for that also. We move on to the side so we've then got our 230 connection and room for our battery in the battery box so going on to a battery we've got red is the positive and black is the negative so that will just have to go onto the corresponding joints on the on the battery our 230 hookup then literally as you get onto site you'll just plug in there's a little cut out here for the cable and then you'll be able to lock that up once you're on site also 
So next along we've got our cassette toilet, we've got our filler for our flush water which is literally just a, um, a water bottle or a watering can and that will fill up and the pink chemical goes into the, the top unit here. Lock that one back up. Your actual cassette then at the, at the bottom is there's a little yellow trigger here that will release the cassette and that will come out. To actually empty the cassette toilet is take off the yellow cap, little breather button and that will empty straight down into the Elson point on site. If you want to put blue chemical or clean this out, there's a little yellow bung just at the side here. That will slide across and then you can clean out and put chemicals etc straight into there. What we must do is make sure that that is back fully closed in the in line position there otherwise it won't slide back in when we come to put the cassette back in make sure our yellow pointer is in the in position that will mean that will now slide in and lock into position now if you come to remove this and it's quite you get a little bit out and it goes quite tight the chances are that inside the little trap for the toilet is actually open or half open so when we go inside we'll show you what to double check on the on the cassette toilet and always make sure that's fully closed and the cassette toilet once that's fully closed will just slide out nice and easily batteries on the side we've got two AA batteries that will light up a little indicator on the toilet which again we'll show you inside and that will light up as this cassette's getting to the full point and it needs emptying the little light will illuminate during the winter we've got a little drain off bung that's just at the little side here and what you need to do is literally take this out and that will then drain the water off over the winter that will drain all of your flush water straight out um, if you remove the cassette and put a little bowl in any water that's going to sort of dribble into this area will just be caught by that bowl then onto our water so our water pump will then drop into our aqua roll and plug straight inside this pump will be inside of the sink on this Bailey caravan when you collect it next along is the flue for the water heater now it will probably have this cover on when you come to collect it when you come to use the caravan just get into a habit of removing this as you're using it it's not that important on the electric side of things but if you're going to use the hot water on gas this cover does have to be removed otherwise the boiler won't light uh, and it's going to cause you problems this has also had a external 230 volt socket uh, fitted on the back here so if you need any power for any reason uh, on the outside you've got an external 230 socket here all of your waste water from sink shower uh, bathroom sink and kitchen sink will come out of these two exits here so that all of your waste water straight out of these here moving around there's nothing on the on the back side of the caravan that you need to do the only other thing that is on the near side somebody has fitted an external aerial point um, so again when you come to connect an external aerial uh, it'll be into this this fitting here so if you go into a site and they've got satellite connection or a different aerial air, an external aerial connection you can connect straight into this one uh, it is also fitted with an aerial on the roof um, so you you have got that option but again sometimes you won't get very good signal on that I'll just pop the awning light on as you're outside um, and to put the awning light on I'll show you in a second we've got a master button which puts our master power on and then our awning light switch which then puts the awning light on and off so on entry to the caravan our first item as I was just saying about the master switch is this will put our master power on uh, this will then on our voltage indicator at the top tell us what we've got either from the battery or coming out of the charger when we're plugged into the 230 mains electric. 
we've then got the awning light which was coming on um, a second ago and you can actually see a little bit of uh, light coming from that one we've got pump which is your water pump and again lights which is internal lights now this control panel is going to be similar on most of the Bailey caravans from around about 2007 to 2010 they may differ slightly but the the buttons is going to be very very similar on most most Bailey caravans once we've got our power into the on position you'll notice that i've not put the water pump on just yet the reason for that is i want to just make sure that if we have just drained the caravan down if we've not used it for a long time or we've been in a winter period and we've drained the water system down before we put that pump on we want to make sure all of our taps are in the off position so we'll just make sure that they're all off and then the other thing to do is our water heater we've got a drain off point that again we want to make sure is actually back in the fill position so this little yellow bunk here is going to drain our water system so in the upright position you may just hear the water spilling out and down that's going to fill the system back up so as we are now for using it and if it's through the winter or you're not going to use it for a long time just pop it into the upright position and that will drain the system back down um, there's not really a lot else that you're going to need to do in this area if you do find just on the the side over this side here just here is our pressure switch so if you find that the the water pump is coming on and off quite a lot this may just need adjusting now to adjust that is a turn clockwise to add pressure and a turn anti-clockwise to reduce the pressure now that we've checked that our water system is ready to be turned on so our little drain off bung is closed all of our taps were closed we can now confidently put our water pump into the on position and open our tap to draw the water through the system now to fill the hot water tank with water we literally just turn the the tap to the hot side and what's that what that's going to do is going to draw the water through that truma water heater it will fill that up so you may get a bit of coughing and spluttering and a little bit of air in the system for the first three four five minutes as as there once we get a nice constant flow of water now we have already had this fairly full and only drained a little bit of water off so this is going to take an awful lot less time to drain or bleed the water through the system but as we've got the water now in a constant flow we know that that water tank is pretty much full of water i'll do the cold system as well because it is a pressurized system and we need to get the water through on all of the taps just to make sure we've got no pressure lee loss in any of the uh, the pipe work And then once you've turned the tap on the water pump will run for about 30 seconds and then cut off now another important feature with the hot water system is that always make sure that if the water tank isn't full of water that our 230 volt heat switch here is in the off position if we were to just come into the caravan and we hadn't got that water tank full of water and we've got this water heater switch on the chances are we're either going to damage the element in the water heater so we're going to it's like boiling a kettle with no water in and the actual little element that heats the water is going to get damaged or it's going to go into a thermal cutout and it's then going to stop working for about 30 minutes an hour until it's turned off and left in the off position for about 30 minutes or an hour it then will sometimes by turning it back on reset but nine times out of ten if you have that water 230 volt switch on before the water tank is full it's going to damage the element and you're going to end up having a costly repair to replace that element um, so 
if you want to put hot water on on alert 230 make sure that we've drained all the water through as we've just said and then it's literally turn that switch into the on position and it's got the little red indicator a little red label just at the top just to indicate that that is in the on position that will then take about 30 40 minutes to heat the water up and get your hot water through the system if you wanted to use the hot water on gas heat your water up on the gas system so if we hadn't got any 230 we'd then slide this button down we'll hear the boiler go through its little routine and we'll have a little green light on the side here now again if you've not used the caravan for a while and you've not had any gas on the on the caravan you'll find all of your gas operations will light up and work an awful lot quicker if we bleed the gas through the system first so by bleeding it through on the hob we can physically see that we've got the gas coming through the system and when these light up we know that the gas is going to light these do need a a little match lighter um, or a a little piezo igniter to to light these up light our match get the gas through and that will light up and that will then be the same on uh, on all uh, all rings the other thing to make sure is that if we've had the hob lit and running that we don't put the glass lid back down while these are hot make sure that they're fully cooled down otherwise again there is a chance that this glass is going to shatter the little ticking noises you may have heard as, as these were cooling down or shutting off is a little flame safety devices on the ring so if it detects that the gas has gone out the flame failure device will cut the gas off and the little ticking noise that you'll hear is, is those. Exactly the same then onto our hob, uh, onto our grill and oven. Again a piezo is, is probably the easiest way to light these but you can do it with a match and again it's hold it in onto the big flame and that will light up and again you can then regulate the flame higher or lower onto the oven let's light my match again again on the big dial on the oven hold it on hold it in for a couple of seconds and that will stay lit now the oven works on a thermostat control so as we turn the dial for the oven up or down it won't make any difference to the size of the flame once that door is closed and the oven gets up to temperature the flame will then go up and down as uh, as the thermostat requires onto the fridge again the fridge is the Thetford fridge uh, and this works on the gas electric and on the car when we're towing now things like the fridge the water heater and the fire once we've run all the kitchen area the hob the grill and the oven and we've lit those up you will find that the fridge the water heater and the fire will light up an awful lot quicker uh, on the gas so to use it on the gas we pop it onto the little flame sign over on the right hand side we've got the thermostat so we want to turn that to the full side hold that in and then over on the opposite side again we've got the little igniter and we'll hit that a few times and again once we've got the gas through the system it will light up very quickly and we've got a little indicator here 
if you can see the red line's gone up into the green release the button if it does go out and the little red indicator comes back down just go through the process hold the thermostat in on the gas for about 30 seconds and it will then stay lit and again you'll you'll actually hear a roar of the off the fridge a slight a slight noise from that as well when it's running on the gas if you now want to run it on electric it would literally just put it to the plug sign and if you're coming on the car and you want to let it just cool down again it will only cool down it's not it's not going to work like it does on electric or gas we literally just pop it onto the battery symbol and that will then run on the car if your car is wired to do so again once we've finished with the fridge just always pop it back into the off position it's advisable if you're not going to use the fridge for some time to pop something in just to hold the freezer door open and again there is a little setting on the fridge door the little tab here will hook underneath and that will just keep the fridge ajar if you're not going to use that for some time again that will then slide back in and just close as normal onto our fire so again we're fitted with the Truma S3002 fire now this has got the blown air heating on the gas and on the electric so to light this up on the gas we're going to turn the control dial around to 10 we hold this one in and then we've got our igniter and now if we hit this probably four or five times and as we release this we may just hear it roar up so hopefully you heard that roar up if you can't hear it going there is a little spy hole here that if you get into the right angle you can see the flame through but if you just put your ear close to the fire you will actually hear that roaring up and then we've got our thermostat again on the top here it's quite a warm day so even on three at the moment the fire's cutting cutting out and then as we turn it back up on the thermostat it just kicks back in if we want our heating on i'm going to turn it off because it's getting quite hot in here in all honesty um, but if you wanted your heating on either on gas or electric and you want the blown air heating the blown air controls are this one here so if you want it with the heating we just flip it onto the a and that will then work in conjunction with either the gas side of the heating or with the electric side of the heating so once we've set that thermostat on either the gas side or the electric side which we'll come to in a minute that will just then work with the the fire and just blow the air around when it's putting heat out and then quieten down when it's not putting heat out the fire and it'll just work alongside the thermostat also on a nice day today if it's getting a little bit hot we can then put it onto the flag symbol and then we can use the dial one to five and we can adjust the temp or the the speed of that fan and that will just blow cool air around the caravan so that will uh, it won't really cool it down so much but it will it will help a little bit if you've got the windows open it will just uh, blow that wall that, that air around if you want to use the fire on electric which if you're going onto site and you're paying for your electric we can then operate the fire on the 230 volt heating now we have two two parts to this so on our heating we have to make sure that our little fuse switch first on 230 room heater is on so again we've got the little red line at the top just to say that that's in the on position and then our actual controls for this fire are here so at the moment we're in the off position if I slide this down to 500 you'll see a little light come on so hopefully you can see a little green light in there now if you've not got that green light the chances are you've not got this switch on so now we've got 500 a thousand and two thousand and that's watts so we've got 500 watts a thousand watts and two thousand watts and um, so again if you've on a site and it's got a good power supply and it's cold you can just pop that straight onto 2000 watts if you're on a site and the electric is a little bit more limited you may have to run that on 500 or a thousand 
Now, it doesn't really matter which setting that you run it on. Um, the thermostat in the middle is exactly the same on, on all. And this will then control what temperature the fire runs at. And again, you may just hear it ticking as we turn that. And that's just telling us that the thermostat on the fire is just kicking in and then back out again as we drop the temperature. And again, exactly the same with the blown air heating. If you put the blown air dial into the A like we did just, that will then work in conjunction with this thermostat and put the air around the caravan as required. You've then got your 230 volt plugs. So again, you've got to make sure that you've got the 230 volt plugged in. If you've got no 230 volt plugged in on the outside, obviously these sockets aren't going to work, but you have also got 12 volt sockets. So again, if you've got a battery on, these will work. So if you've got a 12 volt TV, that, that will work. And as, as mentioned earlier, this has got an aerial fitted on the roof. And just inside of the wardrobe here, we've got the little booster box for the aerial. Now, the little red light indicates that that is on and working. Uh, now, this is fitted with a analog aerial because we've got blue writing. So that, that refers that it's an analog aerial. So the reception on this isn't going to be fantastic. It is going to be a bit hit and miss. Even on the digital ones, to be fair, they're, they're not the best of things in the world, um, which is probably why the aerial on the outside has been fitted. And all of our lights have got individual switches on. So each individual light has got its own switch. Actually, on the, on the light itself, there's two above on the roof light. And again, each individual light, as I say, has got its own little switch. The light switch that's by the door on the control panel, if we were going to go out now for the evening and we've got the lights on, by turning that light switch off, that will disconnect all of the lights inside of the caravan. So when we come back of an evening, we're not going to go around turning all the individual lights on and off as we go out. We can literally just turn them off on the main switch and as we walk back in, just put all the lights on. And again, that's the same all the way through the van. While we're in the bathroom, the cassette toilet, where I was explaining about the cassette not coming out and the, the little trap door being not fully closed, We've got a little grey lever at the side here, which opens and closes the, the little sh shutter in the inside of the toilet. Now, when you come to remove that cassette, make sure that this grey handle is fully back and the little trap hole is fully closed. That then is going to make sure that, that cassette will be able to come out nice and freely. To flush the toilet, it's got a little plunger flush and it's literally just push that up and down and that will push your flush water through and then again to let everything through we just open the trap up and that will let everything back through into the cassette there is the little indicator on the top here that will light up uh, in all honesty what i tend to do is when we go to empty the the waste water so uh on the outside where we've got our connectors for the or sink and shower wastewater when i go to empty that i normally just empty the cassette toilet as well if you want to use the shower in this one it extends up on the on the hose the little pull out comes out and that turns it into a shower push it back in and that turns it back into a tap and again, once you've finished, that just pushes straight back in. There is a little holder just on the side for the shower. So that just pops into there and you pull the curtain around. The main electrics box. So all of your trip switches, fuses, etc. 
or just underneath this front seat here and again the very first one to actually tell whether we've got power coming into the caravan from site so if you ever get it and you're not sure that there's 230 volt power coming in if we just hit the little test button you'll see that the first one trips out and that indicates and lets us know that we have got 230 power coming in our little individual fuses so lights pumps igniters ray roof uh, no fire water heater from the car for the fridge van battery etc they're all they're all in there to make the front bed up is nice and simple on this one we literally pull the pull the board out this comes fully out our back cushions then can either go into the middle or we can turn these cushions over and put them to the outside there's no rolls on these cushions so even with just putting the back rests into the middle um, you do just get a bit of a gap so again it depends then how you want to set that up and whether you want to fold them over um, but again it's it's quite good to be fair on this just dropping the the back cushions into the middle and that does make a good comfortable bed on this one we did another video previously we got a lot of people saying oh you didn't turn all the cushions over uh, that wouldn't be comfortable that to be fair is is very comfortable there's no rolls so uh, two sleeping bags on there then is is absolutely perfect <laughs> don't look like it so our main roof light we've got little catches with little push buttons on to make sure you push the button in on a day to day like today we do need that roof light open to be fair we should have done it earlier and that then just pushes fully open if you have got wind not you but outside we can then release the the bar down and it will sit into the little holders here and if it is a windy day it's not going to take off uh, and cause any problems So again just just make sure that uh, it's not a windy day if you're going to leave that fully open it has also got the fly screens and blinds on so we have also got the fly screen and blinds on both and again all the windows you've got the fly screens and blinds the back bed so this makes into a double bed at the back here uh, similar to the front the the little pull out here pulls comes forward and your back cushions can drop into the middle the freestanding table just unhooks with folding it up twist of the leg and that's removed there is a little cubby hole by the side of the kitchen to store that in uh, and then the steel frame bunk bed we need to remove the cushions so remove the cushions and the bunk bed then folds towards us folds out and then there's clips either side so these little materials clip underneath each side folds towards us and folds out and back up all of our cushions for the bunk bed the bunk bed ladder are all underneath of here And again to put the back bed back together nice and quick 
portions just drop back in we have got the sliding door to partition the rear section off again that slides across and blanks the rear off hopefully we've given you a good insight of how everything works on your new Bailey caravan uh, if there is any questions anything that you want us to run back through please let us know in the comments and um, we can just run back through anything that you wish um, as I say we have got individual videos on the Truma fire we've got individual videos on the Truma water heater so the, there is other little videos as well if you hit the subscribe button you'll be able to find those other videos too thanks for watching Mark at the caravan place mm -hmm.